Because if you got some secret thing that you're holding on to that is stunning your spiritual growth, you can't be all God wants you to be with some stuff you're still hiding. Here to gain is one of those strange and enigmatic Old Testament stories that involve this mysterious, miracle-working prophet of old named Elisha, for he has been Elijah's understudy. Elijah's apprentice, Elijah's student, and uh, he has been mentored by this elderly man of God, which, which is an aside from the sermon, but I need to just throw in here parenthetically that every Elisha needs an Elijah. That, that's not the sermon, but every old man needs to find a young man who's messed up and on the wrong road and help get him straightened out because somebody had to help straighten you out. Every Ruth ought to have a Naomi. Every John Mark needs a Barnabas. Every Timothy ought to have a Paul. Because you need somebody to help you in your faith walk. Uh, you, you need to be around uh, godly people. Uh, they, 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 they can give you some experiences of their faith that can help you build your faith. Talk back to me if you can. You build your faith not only with experience, but by hearing the stories of other people that God has been good to. And when I hear about miracles in somebody else's life, it encourages me that God is still able to work a miracle in my own life. When I'm discouraged, I need somebody to come alongside me to encourage me that weeping may endure for a night. Uh, but joy comes in the morning. That, that kind of talk wakes up my faith. It stirs my faith to know that no matter how dark my situation, God can work it out. Uh, here is Elisha, who is happened upon by this widow whose husband was a son of the prophet's. He's dead, and now she and her two sons are bereft of income. They are left destitute by his perhaps sudden passing. And they are in debt to their creditors. They have nothing with which to pay. So she finds the man of God, and she pours out her complaint to Elisha. Elisha says, what do you want me to do? And upon the heels of that question, Elisha says, whatever I'm going to do is going to require your participation. Somebody going to get with me here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do but you need to do what you need to do. You need to participate in your own breakthrough. You need to have a hand in your own miracle. You need to join in with me to participate in your own coming out. Uh, don't, don't pray and ask God for a job 
and you're not looking for one. Come on, help me preach a minute. Don't pray and ask God for deliverance from some situation and you are not in an active participant. If you, if you dislike somebody and that dislike has turned to bitter hatred, you can't hate somebody you're praying for. Start doing the opposite of what you've been doing and see how God will bring you out of that situation. It's hard for you to hate somebody you're praying for. When you participate in your own deliverance, God will do what God will do but you have to do what you can do. You, you need further proof of that? Uh, Peter was in jail. Uh, he had been put in jail because he was preaching the gospel. And the Bible says in the book of Acts that Peter had fallen asleep. And he was sleeping so soundly that God was ready to deliver him. And God sent an angel and Peter was sleeping so hard, the angel had to wake him up. Because when you know you're doing the will of God and you're in trouble for doing right, you can go to sleep. Uh, fret not because of evildoers. I wish I had time to stay right there. But the angel shook him and woke him up. And the angel brought Peter to the outer uh, gates of the prison. And when Peter got to the gate that he couldn't open, the angel opened it for him. And the Bible says when Peter got to a place where he knew where he was, the angel disappeared from sight. Because God will do what you can't do. But when you can handle it, He'll disappear from your sight. Don't ask God to do what you can do. Uh, sometimes our prayers are full of errands that we want to run God on that we can do ourselves. You go to the hospital. Talk back to me if you can. You help those who are poor and needy. You can do that. You don't need God to do that. God has given you the wherewithal to do that. Uh, the Holy Ghost is not just for shouting on Sunday, but it's to enable you to get work done on Monday. Uh, deliver me from somebody who is all church and no obligation. All hand clapping and foot stomping. That's good. I love that. We ought to celebrate in church. But the Holy Ghost is not concerned about how high you jump when the Spirit comes, but how straight you walk when you come down. How many lives have you made better because of what you heard me preach Sunday morning? The man of God says, what do you have? She said, your handmaid has nothing but this jar of oil. And here's what the prophet tells her to do. The prophet says to her, now, get your sons and tell your boys to go around the neighborhood, go everywhere they can, get all the vessels that they can find Bring them to your house. But now listen. Don't limit your blessings. Wow, wow, wow. Borrow not a few. That, that's what I want to preach about this morning. Don't limit God. God has so much that he wants to do in your life. But you limit God and God's being able to work in your life when you don't bring God everything. See how quiet you got right there? Because there are some things in your life that you are not ready to turn loose. There are some sins you're not ready to get rid of. Talk back to me if you can. 
there are some issues and some hang-ups that you are still harboring to yourself. And the Lord says, give it all to me. Because if you got some secret thing that you're holding on to that is stunning your spiritual growth, you can't be all God wants you to be with some stuff you're still hiding. And, and you can hide it behind a choir roll. You can hide it behind that little thing you put on your head on the first Sunday night. You can hide it behind a title at the church. Have I got a witness here? But when you bring it all to the Lord and give it all to the Lord, he can do more with it than you can because God is waiting for somebody this morning to bring it all. Now the choir sang that a moment ago. But I want to know if that's really true. Are you truly sold out? I mean, are you really sold out? Does God have your money? Does God have your mind? Does God have your heart? Does God have your property? Does God have your issues? Does God have your problems? Does God have your hang-ups? If not, then you are half sold out. Or almost sold out. See, that's why you can't shout in this kind of preaching. That's why you can't get happy on the truth. Because you know you still got some stuff that you haven't sold out yet. But the reason I praise God with such enthusiasm is because I give God all my problems, all my sins. I'm not lying about anything. I don't have anything in my breast pocket. I don't have anything up my sleeve. God knows everything about me that's wrong. I have no secret faults or sins. I give it all to the Lord so that he can anoint it with his power so I can preach to you with a clear conscience. And if you know something about me, so what? I told the Lord about it. And he forgave me. And if you got a problem with it, that's not my problem. Stop letting people smother your amens. Stop letting people drown your hallelujahs. God's brought you out. Let me 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 try to make this make sense. Elisha says, now, now if you want to come out of this, the, the way you need to come out of this, let me tell you what you do. Go borrow some vessels. And however many you bring, that's how blessed you're going to be. If you bring a little bit, all you're going to get is a little bit. But if you get everything you can get your hands on, however much you want to be blessed, that's how much you got to bring. And I want to tell somebody in this church this morning, if you want to be blessed, However much Holy Ghost you brought with you. Because the oil represents the Holy Ghost. However much of that you brought with you, that's how much you're going to get. But if you're holding something back, you will leave this worship unfulfilled. 
Nobody can teach you faith. They, they, they can teach religion. They can teach church work. They can teach you how to act and respond to the welcome. Uh, they can teach you how to say give an honor to God and to the pastor in his absence and to Jesus who's the head of my life. It's easy to learn church talk, but you got to live faith. Am I doing all right? You got to go through some things in order for you to get faith. You've got to have some life experiences under your belt so you can talk about how strong your faith is. Because if your faith has never been tested, you can't brag on how strong it is. I need somebody here who's had to cry in the midnight hour. Have I got a witness here? I need somebody here who had to laugh to keep from crying. And then when all the company left, you went in the room and cried all by yourself. But the Lord dried your tears. The Lord opened doors. The Lord made a way. Your faith is strong. And you're not just talking about it. I, I used to I used to foolishly believe that you had to be old to have faith. We used to laugh at old people in church. You know, th those of us who were raised in church, we used to play church after church because we would laugh at how those old people would shout and, and how the preacher would preach. We would mock how the deacons prayed and laugh at how they fell out in the choir stand and the usher had to grab somebody and they used to put smelling sauce under their nose and, and fan them and try to calm them down and we would act like that when we got home because we were playing church but some of us have been through enough that we are not playing anymore because God has brought us through some stuff. I wish I had a witness here. God has brought us through enough now that we don't have to act like nobody else. We know how to praise God for ourselves because our faith is getting stronger and stronger because of what we already been through. Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come he said go, go borrow some vessels and borrow not a few now the vessels the, the allegory in this text the vessels represent a body a, 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 a flesh and blood body and the oil represents the Spirit of God. And Elisha is saying to this woman what I want to say to members here at Lily Grove. That, that when you have the vessel with no oil in it, you can experience restoration without revelation. You can get needs met without revelation. And when needs are met without divine revelation, you're going to get in trouble again. Somebody going to help me preach here. When, in other words, when you get done what you need to get done in your flesh without the revelation of the Holy Spirit, you will start bragging on yourself. And you will crave other people's recognition. 
and you will be hurt if others don't pat you on the back. But when you get divine revelation, I wish I had a witness here. You don't care who likes you or who does not like you, who's on your side or who's not on your side, who's with you or who's not with you, just like God brought you out before, you got confidence, spiritual confidence, that God will do the same thing again. You thought it was over when you got your divorce. But look at you now. You thought it was the end of the line when you walked off that last job. <laughs> but God never closes a door unless he's getting ready to open a window. You thought when those friends got out of your life that you would be miserable. But you're so happy now you can't even wait to get up in the morning. Have I got a witness here? Because sometimes God's got to separate us from what we think we can't get along without to let us know that he was there all the time. Sometimes you got to hit rock bottom before you can shout about the rock who is at the bottom. Have I got a witness here? Sometimes God's got to get you out of a certain crowd. God's got to get you away from a particular condition. God's got to deliver you from a particular circumstance for you to recognize that all you need is God. I'm, I'm going I'm to ask you a few questions. And I'm going to give you the answer the first time. And then the next time I ask a question, I need you to just follow up with the answer. You got it? Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. And then I'm going to give you the answer. Then the next question I answer, or ask, I need you to follow up with the answer. All right? When Jesus was born of a virgin, the person behind that was God. That's the answer. Who put Jesus in the womb of Mary? That's the question. The answer is God. You got it. You, you already own it. Who turned that water into wine through Jesus? Who raised Peter's mother-in-law through Jesus? Who got Lazarus up out of the grave through Jesus? Who raised Jesus from the dead? You got it. You got it. Now, when you got in trouble, who delivered you? When you were down to your last dime, who came to your rescue? When your friends got few and you needed somebody to come and talk to, who whispered in your ear? Have I got a witness here? God is the answer to every one of our problems. But without the Holy Ghost, you can experience restoration without revelation. He told her, get some vessels. Fill it with oil. Because if there's no oil in the vessel, not only will there be restoration without revelation, but there will be reformation without revival. Reformation without revival. I want you to get this. Nature forms us. Sin deforms us. Environments conform us. Schools inform us. Prisons reform us. But only Christ can transform us. If any man be in Christ, 
I wish I had a witness. He is a new creation. And if you experience reformation without revival, you will be empty in showing how much you love God. When, when, when you don't have revival in your reformation, all the sermon you've heard me preach, you'll forget it by the time you get to the car. You, you'll cuss somebody out in the parking lot. You'll gossip in your Sunday school class. That's reformation without revival. Talk back to me if you can. The Holy Ghost won't just make you happy. He'll keep you holy. Uh, the, the Holy Ghost is not just good for Sunday morning worship. It's good for dealing with people on your job Monday morning. It's good for handling your children on Wednesday night. Have I got a witness here? I've had to call on the Lord in recent days to help me with my daughter. Uh, because naturally, I want to kill her sometimes. But then when I realized the mess I got myself into, that my heavenly father was patient with me, I've got to ask God to give me the same power that the Holy Ghost can give me to deal with my situation because I'm not always right. Now I want to talk to some of you super saints in here who don't, who don't get it wrong, who don't make no mistakes who are always doing it right and you're so spiritual that you answer your phone, praise the Lord, and, 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 and your email is so-and-so-god.com. Well, I'm not that spiritual. There are some days when I blow it big time. There are some days when I mess it up and I need the Lord to come and forgive me. Anybody here want to be honest this morning? There are days when I mess it up so bad that I don't even look like a Christian. But thank God I don't have to look like it. I don't even have to feel like it. I just got to know in my heart that he saved me by his precious Holy Spirit so that I need to fill my vessel every time I get a chance with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www.lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy.